Uh, this is just a quickie, it's not a proper video. We're here at Shildon in the northeast, kind of the cradle of the railways. Just have a look at some of the old locos here. They've got the locomotion, and I believe they've got the rocket here as well. But we are going to come back and do a proper vid, but this is just a quick thing, just to give you a taste of what's here. You can come and visit yourself, eh? So this is a replica of the rocket that was built in 1979, you say? Yeah, the yeah. original, the original was in the museum. The original was in the museum, and it was done for the Rain Hill Trials, the redone of the Rain Hill Trials. Uh, and I think it was done a lot, a lot of it was done at Bull Colliery. Of course, it's of interest to us because the rocket ran on the mid home Railway, on the Brampton Railway. So this is a fantastic replication of it. I'm sure Nick will go through how the firebox and all the things were changed from the original to when uh, Lord Carlisle bought it. So this is the locomotion built by George Stevenson to run on the uh, Stockton and Darlington Railway in 1825. Remember, sometimes Stevenson was uh, thought of as an output of Pitmon. That's how some of the modern engineers of the time looked at him. Well, this was 1825 and it had a breakneck speed of 15 mile an hour. Fantastic, isn't it? But there's another couple next to it that are really interesting. Not that this isn't interesting, but these are fantastic as well. So meet Timothy Hackworth. He was a kind of local guy and he worked on the Stockton and Darlington Railway. So we come to the Liverpool Manchester and the, the famous Rain Hill trials, that £500 prize to see which locomotive would run on the line. And Timothy, well, he came up with the Sans Perel. And this is the Sans Perel. And it did really well. But sadly, halfway through the trials, it had a cracked cylinder, so it had to retire, leaving the, uh, the arena open for George Stevenson again. This must be a replica of the Sans Perel Sam, eh? I'm taking it to be. Rather than the, that, I'm taking the other one to be the original. Colourful, isn't it? I don't like the green. Like our kitchen. No, that just needs cleaning. Right, and here it is. The main man itself. For, for people like me who aren't really that... I wouldn't say I'm not interested in trains, but it, it pits for me. But for somebody of my level, the rocket really is the thing to see. This is like going to see the Taj Mahal, and this is the real thing. What we looked at outside was a, a replica, as we said, built in 1979. This is Stevenson's actual rocket. This is what ran at the Rain Hill Trials, ran on the Liverpool-Manchester Railway, and what run on Lord Carlisle's Brampton branch. This hold coal from the newly sunk mid home colliery down to Holbank Gate, down the plain head, and down towards Brampton Junction. And this is it, it's actually it. It's slightly different, and Nick will tell us how things were modified. The pistons were certainly lowered. Um, I think when they were high up, it caused a lot of rocking and one thing or another. But anyway, hopefully we'll come back with Nick and Jimmy um, to find out a bit more about it. But here we are, the actual thing, have a good look.
it's a fantastic name, isn't it? And this is from the, the railway that ran from Port Carlisle into Carlisle itself. Now, dandy cars also ran on the mid -home railway. They were basically for, people, for passengers, and they were originally horse-drawn. And the mid -home railway had an intermittent sort of passenger service, really. And interestingly, if you go to mid -home, in the wall, you'll see two great big blocks of stone, and one's got carbonate railway, further along the station, so it, like it was an old signpost going up. Um, this is a, da like I say, this is a good example of a dandy car from the Port Carlisle Railway. It dates from the 1856, this one, and they used to take them up to the gears, but they're a bit more basic, perhaps like the one next to us, and the, the locomotive would take it up to the gears, and the men would come down on, the, on gravity, uh, just operating a brake. So here you are, local dandy car. And this is another example of a dandy, but this is different. <laughs> the passengers in this were, were horses. So, as you know, a lot of the old wagonways, they went a long way to the pits, and quite a lot were downhill, especially the, the Tyndall wagonway. Now, I'm not suggesting for one minute this, anything like this was used at Tyndall. But the horses would pull the empty wagons up to the pits, and the, the trains and wagons would come down on their own steam. And to give the horse a rest, the horse would ride down in this sort of a dandy wagon. Brilliant, isn't it? It's a plough, but if you have a look at it, it looks like a bit of a front end of the ship, doesn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Because look at this one, and all brilliant. That's my So the significance of this is that it actually pulled Winston Churchill on his funeral from after the funeral cortege at uh, St Paul's. His body was then taken back to Oxford for burial, and this is what drove the took him. He went on this last final train. That one then, Sam. It's a merry-go-round train, isn't it? So we've seen the, the really old wagons, coal wagons, and this is one of the modern ones that went from the pits, when we had them, to the power station. And they just went, did a, kept doing a loop from the pits to the power station. That's why they were called merry-go-round. And then, as the picture shows you, put in a great big tippler and tipped. This is off a Black Five, isn't it? The cab of a Black Five, Sam? Hmm. It's awesome that I hate people use that word these days, awesome, but it is pretty impressive to say the least. If you had the controls, you'd be pretty apprehensive, or at least I would. <laughs> Which history book you believe, apparently, this was either a George Stevenson of 1822 or it was built around about 1855 in the Hetton Colliery workshops as a replica of an older engine. Um, and I, like I said, I, I'm no railway historian, but the latter seems to be possibly maybe, maybe true. Uh, but it worked until the 1910s, believe it or not. So while all these other end locomotives, famous locomotives we've looked at, were, were off the line, some of them rotting in sheds and gardens. This was still actively working, and apparently it was brought out of retirement to celebrate the centenary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway as well. So that really is impressive, isn't it? That longevity of work. Very fittingly, the rocket is situated next to this old Ellington loco. Underground loco from Ellington Colliery. Ellington was the last sort of deep mine in the north, uh, in the northeast coal field. I can't remember what year it shut. I know. We were always worried about it closing for the rescue team, but anyway, yeah, proper colliery locomotive. Long, innit?
saying that it was the first railway town in the country. And even today it lives on all over the world really for the workshops uh, and all the repairs it did and all the wagons that, that it produced. So like I said, this is just whistle stop. We need to come back with some real railway locomotive experts. And it's goodbye from the locomotion. Locomotion number one. I really recommend you come and have a look. And this engine was so famous that even a century later, Carly Minogue sang a song about it. Catch you later.